I'm Mary Rose Osta. I'm a filmmaker from Lebanon. I have a film here in Vireo, Brazil, by the name of Then Came Dark. It's a short. It has uh, no dialogue. It's really based on image and sound, and I cannot imagine the image being without the sound. The, the sound is very, very important. So, this film is actually about uh, a forest retaliating against two men that's invading her. It feels like a dead forest. It's in winter time. Haze feels like a character. Everything is a character because we are with the forest from its point of view. And the entire idea behind it was me imagining how actually nature would react to us, how its anger would look like, what sounds would it make, what kind of reactions, what kind of feel would it have to actually have nature go crazy, retaliate against us. Not with the natural disaster, because that's natural. I wanted to see beyond that, like if it gets really angry, like it really wants to get its revenge from us. Most part of the shoot was very instinctive. I went there for six days. I shot four days because I wanted a specific weather and I wanted a specific light. So I waited and I waited. And while waiting, something very nice happened. It changed the narrative of the story. The, the van actually of the two invaders gets stuck in the mud by accident. So the entire film somehow is accidentally happening in front of me uh, on camera. So it was a really beautiful experience. There's only one green tree and it feels like it's the heart of the forest. We don't have any animals there. We don't have anything living but the, the green uh, tree that is ripped off from earth by the two men. So uh, the film is like cut in two. The first half is the forest waiting for the, for the man, just following them, creating a, a chain of communication, because trees actually signal a lot of um, information with their roots to their community. And they signal danger, they signal, uh, they, they give uh, nutrients to each other. There is, a, there is a mother tree that takes care of the rest of the younger trees so it's a community it's a living community and everything there like the shots were thoughts in a way of how how would i portray a signal how would i portray a message by not going underground and actually mimicking the signals of um, the between the roots and then when i discover with the rest of the forest that these two men are coming for this evergreen tree the rain falls the haze comes in, the wind blows, everything goes crazy. And the second part of the film is the retaliation of the forest, how it would actually manifest its anger. So the tempo and the tension and the sound, they all go up after a certain silence, a silence of death, just when the trees got pulled. And the build-up, the crescendo, let's say, goes up to a, a point where it becomes really annoying for the ears. It becomes really accentuated and, and high-pitched. And it feels like, like, a, like a cry of a mother or a cry of, of someone mourning uh, someone else that's like a loved one. And then uh, after the van gets stuck in the, in the mud, because the, the two men actually taking the, um, the trees along with them, they're dragging it, like terrorists used to drag dead bodies in the streets of the cities. So what happened is that they just leave without it. The forest gets its tree back, even if it's dead, but the enemy didn't get to take it. So it's sort of a exchange between the forest and the two men as if we'll let you go, but you have to, you have to leave the tree here. <laughs>